Welcome back to the channel everyone, this is Stefan on the French Cooking Academy and on your request today we are doing another soup, it's true, I confess we haven't done many and the last one we've seen was how to make that cream of mushroom and this delicious kind of velouté soup with the mushroom but today we're moving on to the second type which is the puree base types of soup in French they are called potage puree and the puree is actually the main ingredients and today we're going to see a classic uh, but simple a recipe called the potage puree Crécy Labriard, uh, such a, a mouthful. And when you hear that name Crécy in French cooking, it rings automatically with this carrots. Because Crécy La Chapelle is actually the name of a small community near Paris, and they used to be known, maybe less today, but for their beautiful carrots. So the beauty of that recipe and the most important you need to get your hands on very 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 good carrots for the rest is very simple ingredients onions a little bit of potatoes uh, to uh, add to, like, to act as a binding agent and of course creme fraiche butter water seasoning salt pepper a little bit of sugar and we're done we're gonna get our hands on a beautiful soup so let's get to your pan and let's get started So let's start our weekly recipe by a tour of uh, the ingredients and uh, the mise en place, what has to be done. So first off, this recipe is taken from our uh, uh, Escoffier Guide Culinaire, on the guy from Escoffier, and there's one mistake that seems to be uh, done by a lot of people is by doing that recipe and adding licks in the recipe. The Escoffier Guide tells us that in all the versions of the Crécy soup, it is only carrots, onion, and potatoes as the binding agent. Uh, so Mise en place, you're going to have to finely slice the carrot, same for the onion, you're going to have a branch of thyme, a measure of the butter, the creme fraiche, two pinch of salt, one pinch of sugar, and then cut the potatoes in little cubes. For the liquid we're going to be using, no stock today, but four cups or one liter of water. I'm using filtered water, you can even go as far as using mineral water if you really want to have a great quality soup. And don't, don't forget that tap water sometimes is not that great. And now let's start the recipe. I'm using uh, the Le Creuset cast iron pot. Um, it's always a great pot to cook, especially for soups. And we're going to be starting the recipe by adding all of the butter. And as someone did ask me in the comment, is there anything without butter in French cooking? And actually I was looking around, I was like, well, I don't really think so. It's, it's always butter. It's kind of, you know, it has to have butter in French cooking. I don't know why, why is that, but it's like we were born with that thing. But anyway, you're going to start on medium heat adding the butter and the first step of course as always is to let it melt and don't burn it so medium to low take it easy melt the butter as soon as your butter is melted we're gonna add straight off the onions mix everything in and then we're gonna add the carrots as well immediately yeah? because they're gonna have to cook in butter just for a few minutes and let them sweat a little bit once the carrots are in, it uh, goes in the seasoning. So as you can see, I've got a little bit of salt and a pinch of sugar. There's always a, a mix of uh, sugar and salt with this coffee, and then you mix everything well. So when everything is mixed up, one of the most important thing there is uh, in that preparation here, I want to show you on the side, is not to have any coloring. You see that part? So there's no burning. The onion must not get brown at all, not even blonde. You want to keep everything really really at low temperature with a little bit of butter and force the extraction of the natural water content that is in the in the carrots so very low heat from now on and we're going to put a lid on and leave this uh, to cook for five minutes and this is called étuvée au beurre hein, to, it's kind of a steaming process in butter if you want you can have a tiny drops of water as well to create some steam hein. so like five minutes with a lid on five minutes have passed if you can see the steam here and the water, that's what you want. So from here, basically, we're ready to add our liquid uh, in the shape of water. One liter of cold water, which is four cups. And then we're going to add the potatoes straight up to the water within the potatoes. Yeah. We're going to bring this to a simmer and we're going to cook this covered for 10 to 15 minutes, I said 10 to 15 minutes because it depends on the thickness of your carrots. We don't we want to have everything cooked, huh? the uh, potatoes and the carrots before we can start to mix the whole lot. And when I say a simmer, this 
is what I mean. Uh, so we're not doing any raging boil or anything like this. You're gonna keep your soup at this kind of bubbling away level. And when your liquid reach this, you start counting 10 to 15 minutes from here. So now I'm gonna put the lid on and put my timer on for 15 minutes. And that should cook the carrots and the potatoes. And after we'll look the result and go to the next step. My soup is now cooking gently. And what I'm gonna do here, I've got a pan, I'm gonna make some croutons. So a tablespoon of oil and same of butter. And I'm gonna take some bread that I've cut here and just very gently make some little croutons here. And we just want to have a little golden color. So they're not the best of so some leftover baguette I had. But it's just going to be the garnish for the soup. Huh? So I'm going to leave them there until they're nice and golden brown. Our croutons are now ready. As you can see, got a nice golden color. Huh? So I turn the heat off. And what I'm going to do is to put this on a paper towel like this. Huh? So we are basically going to drain out all of the excess oil and then reserve them on the side. My 15 minutes have passed and my vegetables are cooked. So the most important when you check, you're going to take the potatoes and if with a fork like that, see, you're able to put this into a mash, it's cooked. Now same thing for the carrot, they need to be very, very tender and, and cooked. And if, you're, if your slice is a bit too thick, make sure they're really cooked. So what we're going to do here, it's extremely simple. You're going to get rid of that branch of thyme, take a stick blender and then blitz the whole thing. Now when it comes to stick blender, uh, they sound a bit modern for French cooking, but they really gain their place in the kitchen and even a lot of modern kitchen nowadays uh, have one of those. I'm using even one with this kind of uh, moderation of speed. You can, I can go very low or higher speed and that's great for this kind of thing because you don't want to destroy everything. So I'm going to go on a medium speed and pass my soup. All right, so it's done. So let's have a look. You see the consistency of that soup? It's a lovely puree style of soup, but it's still very thick. And now comes the moment that I really like is adding the cream in. Uh, because now this is a bit thick and adding the cream is gonna be up to your liking to get that perfect consistency that you like. For, for me, I'm gonna add a, easily one or two tablespoon of cream and with a whisk, I'm gonna gently incorporate all that in. Mm. Second check after two tablespoons, two large tablespoons of cream, I'm gonna taste the soup. Oh, look at that color. It's really smooth, let me try that out. Wow, now that is smooth. But you know what? I think I'm gonna be a bit naughty there and add one more spoon of cream. Now, Escoffier said we can put up to 200 ml which is the whole pot that I've got here and I've got half the pot in. So I'm way off the chart already. And you know, I could even add more, but after it's gonna be really, really creamy. So that's gonna be, oh, look at that color, I love it. Now for the final step, you got another container. I'm using a sieve and we're gonna take the soup just to show you. And we're gonna pass this for a fine mesh sieve and to capture all of the bits that may still reside to have something absolutely Perfectly smooth. Final touch, the nudge of butter. Now let me tell you one thing. There are soups and there are Escoffier style soups and this is something else. I mean, look at that texture. It's insane. For a carrot soup, I mean, if, I would not have expected something this good with just onion, potatoes and a few carrots. My nudge of butter is now gone. I'm gonna put the heat back on a little bit just to warm up the soup enough. And look at this, this is the result of the finished soup and the potage puree Crécy à la Briard, uh, the ultimate carrot soup. And what's left to do now is to serve. All right, so here we are. For the service, I'm gonna use a plate and of course we got the garnish, the crouton, and some leaves of coriander to decorate. So I'm going to try to not to be too messy and pour this first in the plate before I put the garnish in. The soup is in and before I add the garnish I'm going to do that last uh, tasting of the soup and really to tell you see the consistency. That's what a potage puree like a puree it's not like a velouté it's really this puree of fresh vegetables. Mm. 
or that balance of ingredients is spot on. I mean, you, you gotta love French cooking, honestly. It is really this techniques that brings everything together at the end and create a beautiful product and bring that on your table. Now, decoration usually, it's usually chervil that you need to use. This kind of, uh, it's a little bit of these old fashioned stars. I'm just gonna put three little leaves like that. And you just sprinkle a few croutons. So we're trying to keep the elegance of the dish, you know, that, uh, that little bit of the old fashioned ways uh, with the croutons. We don't do it over the top. It's just a sprinkle of ingredients. And that's it. Here is the potage purée. Crécy à la Briarde, uh, aka the Escoffier style carrot soup. It's beautiful. And we've reached the end of this week's tutorial and I will dedicate this one actually for uh, you are the vegetarian because I didn't mention that but that was actually a vegetarian recipe so rejoice huh? we can have one recipe without meat which is great and that's a great change so I hope you enjoy the recipe as always if you try to make the recipe drop me a comment in the section below tell me what you think send me always your picture on Instagram your many of sending me the pictures I love to see what you make and don't forget you can follow me on Facebook, also become a patron on my Patreon page. And don't forget the upcoming course, Get Started with French Cooking on our online culinary school. You can find all the details on our website. So may I leave you with that picture and I'll see you next week for another recipe. Take care all, bye-bye.